All right. Um, yeah, hi, everyone. Um, so I'm a data scientist working at Tails.com. And as well as being a data scientist, I'm also a big fan of dogs, as you can see here by some of the pictures, which is convenient for me because Tails.com is a dog food company. And what we offer is tailor-made dog food. And so how this works in practice, um, we're a subscription service. If you have a dog, you sign up and you tell us a lot of information about your dog, so about their breed, their gender, whether they're neutered or not, health issues, what they're used to feed, all of these things. And then we have an algorithm which works out from all of our different um, dry food recipes that we have, which combination of those recipes is going to be the right recipe for your dog that month. And so our algorithm's got two main jobs. So first, it's got to provide great nutritious food for our dogs because that's what our customers expect. But as well as that, it's got to provide tasty food. Because if the dogs don't like eating the food, and then the customer's not going to reorder, and there's no point in all of the great nutrition work that we put in to get your food to your door. And so what this is called in uh, the dog food circles is palatability, which is basically how do we know that the food we're sending out each month tastes good to your dog, as well as being great for your dog. And so obviously, we can't answer this question directly because we ask the dogs, and they can't really tell us exactly why they like the food. So we need to use a little bit of data. So one of the approaches we're using at Tails.com is uh, network analysis. So I'm using a library called Network X. If you've not used this library before, I'd recommend giving it a go. It's pretty good fun. Um, and network analysis is basically a way of representing your data as um, a graph with nodes and edges. And it helps you understand the relationships between your data points, as well as the significance of the data points themselves. And we're using it here as like a visualization tool to see if we visualize our dry dog food recipes that we're sending out to customers as a network, can we then understand using that structure you know, which recipes work, which ones the dogs like, and which ones the dogs don't like as much. So I'm just going to walk you through a little bit about how this works to give you an idea of network analysis and also some of the stuff we're doing at Tails. So first, we're going to start with a bunch of our kibbles. These are our dry dog food ingredients. And we're just going to lay them out in a circular pattern like this. These are the nodes of our graph. Then we're going to add some edges. So here I'm drawing a line. And um, if these two kibbles have appeared in a bag of dog food together. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of lines connecting all of the kibbles together, which basically means that most of our food has appeared in a bag of food with the rest of our food, which makes sense because we're a tailor-made dog food brand. If we were just sending out the same five recipes, we wouldn't really be doing our job very well. But it doesn't really help <laughs> us understand exactly what's going on in our food. So now we resize it. So now I've scaled the width of the lines and the size of my nodes to represent the sort of frequency of that combination or that kibble appearing in the bags together. So now you can start to see some patterns of where our high use common combinations are and where our more rare ones are. And now let's compare that for one of our dogs um, and see what the graphs look like for customers that don't like the food and end up cancelling compared to customers with happy dogs that keep ordering our food. Ultimately, you can see there's not all that much difference right now about how they look because the, you know, the, the insights that we're looking for are quite fine. If it was that easy, we wouldn't be having to use a technique like network analysis to understand what's good and what isn't. So now we're going to color them. And so here I've scaled, I've taken the graph, and um, I've colored it with kind of like a conditional probability that this combination or this kibble ended up um, resulting in a palatability in a cancellation for the customer not liking the food or not, where red is the least... Um, flavorful ones, the ones that resulted in the highest cancellations, and our blue ones are our really high-performing recipes. And so you can see a few insights coming out of here already. So first, we've got this guy in the top right here, um, top left for you. He's, you know, <laughs> it's a pretty big red dot, which means it's relatively high use, and there's a lot of red lines coming out of it, which means everywhere it goes, it tends to result in kind of more likely to be cancellations. So this is something that we can look at and say, okay, this is the next ingredient that we can try and improve. And we can run A-B tests on that and try and improve the formulation to make it tastier for the dogs. And then you've got other ones like this guy down here, where it's like, in of itself, it's, it's, it's not too bad. You know, it tastes OK. It's kind of it's not too red. And you've got a few red lines coming out of it, but you've also got a few blue lines coming out of it. So it's not, maybe it's not the ingredient itself that's inherently not tasty. It's just when it's paired with other ingredients, sometimes that doesn't work for different dogs. And so this is the type of thing that we can feed back into the algorithm and kind of downweight the likelihood that this kibble will be paired with other ones where we can see red lines on the graph and upweight the likelihood that the 
you know, with the blue lines that they appear together. And that way we can kind of teach the algorithm basically to always be selecting tasty food. We're hiring a data engineer. <laughs>